Hey guys, this is Casper with Tape, and today you join me with another space shuttle video. Yes, this is the next upgrade. It's got a bigger fuel tank, it's got bigger boosters, and it has an important payload. Yes, it has a moon lander inside it. I may have slightly deceived you with the uh, title if you were thinking I was going to take an actual shuttle to the moon, but, uh, well, the shuttle isn't quite that good yet. Although, it does have... It's, it, 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 it can go pretty far, I reckon. I could probably fly it past the moon if I really wanted, but yes. I have kept working on this because I really like the idea, and basically the way I've got it right now works really well, so I just keep adding tanks and boosters, and I have moved those uh, boosters in a little bit because they have so much more thrust that um, they don't have to be kind of jarred around the back a little bit to kind of keep it stable. But uh, yeah, now we're just four times time accelerate, because you've seen the shuttle launch probably three times now. If you've watched all of my shuttle videos, which you better goddamn have, because... <laughs> um, Anyway, no, of course, you have the choice of what you watch uh, this country. Anyway, um, yeah, these uh, boosters are KW rocketry. I resisted doing this for a little while because I kind of like the idea of a totally stock space shuttle, but I've proved that it works, and this isn't exactly a massive change. Anyway, those separate really nicely, and I bet if I'd put parachutes on them, they'd land in the ocean, and then it would probably cost more to reuse them than it would to just buy new ones. Yeah, America, what were you doing with your space shuttle? Although that's actually just a funding issue. I think NASA... We're like, we want to make a reusable vehicle, and then you know, the president was like, yeah, we're, well, not the president, the government, we're like, yeah, we're going to give you the money to make a reusable vehicle, and what that really meant was, we're going to give you some money, try hard. Um, but obviously, I mean, there's a lot more problems in the world than getting your space shuttle to work, but it turned out to just be a bit of a failure, given that it cost more to reuse than it did to just build a new one. But still, I'm a big fan of the shuttle, just because it's kind of an iconic vehicle, and everyone likes to re recreate it, and... Obviously, I've managed to do it without a big old Buran engine, and Buran only launched once, so yeah, this is already beating it, although um, returning this is still not going amazingly, but we'll try again this episode, and I'm also going to try and return that fuel tank to make it even more reusable than the American one, um, although I think it lands on the other side of the planet on my current setup, so probably equally um, it pr pretty much as useless as the main tank on the... American shuttle, but anyway, uh, we've got ourselves into a rather nice trajectory, very flat. I like to go flat through the atmosphere, it just gives you more speed and you don't lose so much velocity to gravity, but I don't fully understand all of that, so maybe I'm doing the total wrong thing, who knows. Any whom, let's uh, just cruise and do that annoying oscillating thing. And We've got our four main curls, we've got Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Valentina. Um, because these cockpits hold four people. I think the the actual space shuttle took seven at max. I'm not sure if they did that on every mission. Anyway, I've burned myself into a slightly decent trajectory. Uh, well, yeah, I put myself on the trajectory so that the fuel tank will return, and I'll use the RCS engines to push myself back. You'll notice that I uh, accidentally fired the main engines there, which was foolish because, firstly, it burned some fuel from my moon lander. Not a great thing. And then it also... Um, it also threw me off. Anyway, uh, I do get that into orbit, although it was a little quick. And this is just a shot of me trying to return this fuel tank. Going pretty well, but it, here it starts to explode a little bit. However, it just kind of separates. It's just the main bit of the tank that kind of explodes. Maybe I'll look into that. But uh, here we just have ourselves the main bit with the parachute. So I can still return a little bit, and here we are actually returning it. Just cutting through it, because what do you want to see it falling the whole way? I guess if you like the spectacle of burning fuel tanks. Um, but yeah, two parachutes is fine for this little one, although I knew that if it was the full fuel tank it would probably not land very well. Um, this, however, doesn't land very well either, because I left it at four times time accelerate and totally wasn't paying attention because I was watching the WAN show. Because I have a tiny attention span, I always have stuff, but I'm always watching stuff and recording, hence the no audio. I'm very sorry for that, but you know, when I uh, do things that really need audio, like attacks and um, collaborative warfare, I'm also recording my voice at the same time. But anyway, here we are at the shuttle, and I haven't burned too much fuel tank on that little... M uh, haven't burned too much fuel tank? I haven't burned too much liquid fuel and oxidizer in that little mishap where I fired the main engines. Anyway, let's uh, separate this... Um, well, not separate, just release this moon lander. And then realize that there's no one in it because um, I forgot, uh, basically. So I'm going to have to just f get Jeb out and freaking fly over there and get in a moving spacecraft. Because that, that's actually how Jeb wanted it. He was like, nah, climbing through a tunnel is, well, actually, the way it was orientated, he would have had to climb through the engine, through the fuel tank, through a completely solid piece of science equipment, 
and then punch through the heat shield and get into it, which would have been more badass, but he decided it would be easier just to fly through space. Anyway, now we are all set up for going to the moon, and here we are, just lighting up our engine, and while this is, um, well, on its trajectory to the moon, I'll return the shuttle, hopefully. Um, but yeah, this is just pretty much a proof of concept. It's actually a pretty light payload. The point of this was to uh, see if I could get a heavier payload, but I think this only weighs about seven tons, whereas... Um, that shuttle net is now capable of at least 10, probably more, which I'm going to probably just test and see how much I can get to orbit. Because I want to do 20 tons in the shuttle. I think that would be an actual useful thing. And then I could put an actual big moon lander on trajectory, rather than this little one. Um, pretty weird moon lander. It's just got a really thick base and a lot, a lot, a lot of fuel because I kind of threw it together and just wanted something that would be functional and would fit in the cargo bay mainly. I was going to use... Um, smaller tanks that, you know, drop off, but that didn't fit because decouplers are large and things. So I just went for this kind of um, flat tank, which is pretty pr pretty good. It has all the fuel, and then I don't have to drop loads of stages and all that shit. Because that kind of gets the old, it's too many, too many things. Too many things can go wrong. I know it's Kerbal Space Program and stuff doesn't go wrong that often. Um, but, but, yeah, you know, with stage separations, not so much. But still, it's easier to not separate things. Anyway, I'll just put myself down to the moon so that I can, uh, you know, put myself on a good trajectory and just land. And I'll deploy the solar panels. Um, yeah, this is actually a pretty functional moon lander. It has a pretty serious science payload, like all the scientific equipment, and carries a Kerbal. Probably could have carried two if I had thought it through a little more. But anyway, now it's time to bring the shuttle back, so I'll use my orbital maneuvering engines, um, all those little RCS engines, to uh, deorbit myself. Um, I put my periaps... Uh, just a little bit over the continent over the KFC. I like to actually usually put it a little uh, in front, but I kind of messed up. And here's just a few shots of me returning. Um, I actually did do the weaving maneuver. I really should have left that in, but you saw it last time. Basically, you make heavy turns in the upper atmosphere, which slows you down and puts you on the right trajectory, so you so spend less time in the uh, level, spend have less velocity when you get to thicker atmosphere. But I do have air brakes this time, the big air brake things you can see. Um, which uh, is really useful for slowing um, things down, and I need to slow down before I hit kind of 30 kilometers. And I do, and that all actually goes well, and it was all very uneventful. So I just skipped to this bit where I was trying to turn, because I bled off way too much velocity trying to not explode. Um, and then I'm just trying to turn towards this kind of land, so that I can, uh, you know, so I can land on land, and not the ocean. Um, so I'm getting rid of those, well, deploy no, retracting those air brakes, so I don't, you know... Um, don't slow down so much that I just hit the ocean. But then I pull quite hard and that's not what the event I thought it was. Oh yeah, but then I kind of lose control and the shuttle sort of explodes. So, problematic. Um, it now uh, re-enters much uh, more easily and I could get it to go to the space center if I put my periaps way more forward because I'm aggressively braking so I slow down a lot. Um, and now I just need to make it fly better, <laughs> which I thought I managed last time. But apparently not. Apparently not when you're pulling massive turns at Mach 2. Apparently that's just really, really not very good for your aircraft. Um, but anyway, now I'm just using the lifting body of the spacecraft, what's left, and deploying the cargo bay to try and use extra wings, but I don't think the game models it like that, and I think that actually fucked me up. Um, so I'm not going to hit that island. I was going to try and kind of glide to that island, but this flies kind of like a rock. Um, so it falls, and uh, this is it. I was falling very fast at 4 times time accelerate, and then just back to 1 times time accelerate. And my plan here was just gain velocity so I can pull up at the last minute and save the crew and all of those things, but uh, yeah, it's not super aerodynamic or have any control surfaces right now, so it tilts slightly, and they're all lost to the kraken of the ocean, not the space kraken. Anyway, Jebediah completely oblivious to the failings of his crew and totally not the designer slash pilot. Um, yeah, I'm not good at things. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this all at four times time accelerator. I know the moon landing's not super important, but to prove that this can actually launch a moon lander, I thought I'd just kind of throw it in. And I was very impressed at how fast I did this. I pretty much got in, um, did one burn to put myself on a landing trajectory, and then just kind of did a landing very quickly. And we landed in a really nice place with that big ravine and some craters. Although there's craters all over the moon because of all the asteroids and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to touch down on the moon. Actually, uh, just, yeah, like I said, really quick moon landing. I hop out, get, you know, fly back and everything. Um, and I had to jump up a little bit so I don't land on a massive slope. 
uh, because these uh, landing legs are on the smaller fuel tank on the bottom which causes it, causes it to be not super stable but it lands fine and I just do some science and whatever and then get Jeb out and put a flag and it's like shuttle powered moon landing and then I hope my crew are okay hashtag wrecked because he's obviously it's a Twitter flag he's tweeting um, so, something like that. Anyway, now let's just go back because um, I wanted to make this landing really quick because I, I don't know, it's kind of fun to just land on the moon really quickly and make nothing of it even though it's a pretty major task um, and then uh, yeah just return to Kerbin and hopefully this will go much better on the return because I'm not in a big stupid plane uh, <laughs> designed by stupid people, obviously not by me, obviously by the Kerbals, it was the Kerbals fault um, <laughs> No, of course, it was me being too aggressive with my turns and all that jazz. Um, I will be putting this shuttle up for download where I usually put up my shuttles and things. I have a media fire if you don't know where I put up a ton of crap. Um, there's like some old like fightery things, not that much from Collaborative Warfare, although I think there's the HSI because I've used that for so long. Although it's an older variant which isn't quite as good, but still, feel free. Um, but this will be... Uh, this will be there with the rest of the shuttles. There's every iteration and a testing model and all that stuff that you can just play around with and think, yay, tape is amazing. Anyway, uh, it lands all fine and we're just fine. Everything went quite well with that. And now he'll be informed that his crew is dead. And I will inform you that this is the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Care to Be With Tape. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.